She bumped her forehead against someone's chin and heard a groan. Susanna rubbed her aching forehead and panically looked at Akira, who was holding her own chin. Kira, Sanpai. Sorry, Sanpai. I didn't mean to do that. It's all right. It's my fault for getting too close to. But you're completely awake now, right? I realize what's going on now. If Kira Sanpai is here, it means that everything that happened before was just a dream. That's true. It's impossible to become an A-rank Valkyrie overnight. It's not accurate to call this phenomenon a dream. Its cause is more complex than you think. Doctor Schrödinger, have you guys finished your mission? Of course. Look at who's in charge. We're discussing why those scenes appear just now. Of course, let's eliminate the possibility of a collective dream. When it comes to dream, I'm a master at teaching people how to dream during the day. I can definitely tell the difference. In contrast, everything here felt similar to those wisps make you feel. Wait, nobody here still thinks that the wisps here are the same as the souls on the other side, right? Are they not? The dead can be revived, dummy. Unless the residents in this universe can truly die, why would there be souls around? Then the wisps that you guys talked about. Strictly speaking, consolation is just a process that gives them their personalities. Dean Sila and Hersha of Sentience mentioned this before. On that side of the world, there are three types of residents: those yet to remember, those who. Remember the past, and those who have already forgotten. I think in the current situation, these form a complete lifetime of an Iron Sun residence. They are living beings who exist to pray for the people on our side, or rather non-human entities. Is that right? Correct. Although accurately speaking, they are not abnormal stigmata. But you can apply your understanding of how abnormal stigmata exist on them, which means the consolation and the nightmares we had before are all part of the universe's rules. What are you guys talking about? I wasn't the only one who entered illusion just now. Yeah, when the last anchor appeared, I was pulled by a white light into an illusion set half a year into the future. There, I was standing on the stage, and there was a accident during the performance. Accident during the performance? That's not important. Something similar happened on the other side of the universe, right? Exactly same as you, except I saw a pitch black darkness before I fell into an illusion. Then what did you see? I don't really understand. Something about small planet, the border of the solar system? No idea. After all, I escaped that place after a short while. I thought, how dare anyone mess with the consciousness of her of sentience? That must must be tired of living. But I couldn't even find a trace of the mastermind because there's no mastermind behind it all. I saw you shouting at the air when I woke up. You look so dumb. Then, Sila, what did you see? Nothing special. I left this godforsaken place and trained and did missions as usual. Then, Sila and I saw similar things. Susanna shared her experience in her illusion with everyone. That's <laughs> Susanna. You're running away from enemies, even in an illusion. <laughs> After listening to everyone's experiences, I suddenly have an idea. I think I understand what all of you saw. Maybe my previous mistake dragged everyone into this. Perhaps what you saw was your future. Hearing that, everyone fell into silence. As it involved the nature of the interferometer, everybody pondered on what Vita meant. As you said, 
Indeed, my illusion took place seven or eight years in the future. Well, that's impressive. Even false gods can manipulate time. Are you saying that you just sent us a few years into the future? Of course, I don't have that sort of power, but this is a bubble universe that can transform deceptions into reality. Transform deceptions into reality. You mean I'm the one who allowed everyone to see those illusions? According to our previous deductions, the anchor that triggered these illusions is incidentally located at where the bubble universe is weak. Maybe that's why I see the sage authority was fully unleashed. But why did it cause others to think of the future? While locating an anchor, I was thinking of the possibilities of various futures I can build. Although my tool can only deduce a limited number of possibilities, maybe see this ability affected by deduction of the future and de develop a new reaction. Even so, you can only barely manage to deduce things that might happen. You don't even know what will happen next second, much less the future. That's true. The other Steve is right. It's just one of the many possibilities regarding the future. It might not happen in reality. And ultimately, this is merely a guess. There's no reliable evidence for this. Although it's only a deduction, there are a reasonable point. After we solve the problem here, do you mind if I do some research on this phenomenon? Of course. I want to know more about it too. Future, as in becoming an A-rank Valkyrie. If the future in my dream comes true, it'll be pretty nice, pretty good indeed. Seems like I unintentionally gave everyone a good experience. I wonder if someone who forcefully broke out of her illusion regrets. Nonsense! From the moment I was born, I never knew regret. So what if the future has been determined? Us hunters can change it if we don't like it. They are merely illusions. I can create numerous ones. I'm afraid you might lose interest in reality if you saw too many. It's not in the stars to hold our destiny, but ourselves. Even ancestors know this. How rare to hear you say something logical. You must be joking. The great herder of sentience always speaks words of wisdom. What you just said doesn't apply. What are you using for a fight? Gosh, I said it was just a guess. Everyone, don't think too deep into this. Yeah, enough with the jokes. Don't let the guess affect our original pace. Since everyone managed to successfully capture the anchors, let's begin integration tests inside the bubble universe. We should return to the tower. Let's decide the next course of action when we meet. And I want everyone to know that Miss Tao, who has been missing the entire time, is our greatest viable. On that matter, she definitely will not harm all of you. Someone's confident. Kira Sampai, now's not the time for this. We can clarify everything after we meet face to face. You're right. Then let's make haste and get going, Susanna. Yeah. See you later, Sila. See you later, everyone. Cutting off the connection with Susanna and the others, the tower instantly became quiet. Perhaps the various tasks had been taking up too much of Sealer's energy, as she was more silent than usual. Sealer quietly listened to the other Sealer's breathing as she thought about something. In the next moment, a simulated room replaced the White Tower, and two people walked into the shared soul space. It seems like the team can't help much until Dr. Schrödinger and the others come up with a conclusion. Ever since we entered this bubble universe, everyone has been overwhelmed by numerous incidents. Now we finally have some time to ourselves. This was something we commonly had in the past. Yeah, it's hard to imagine how much has happened in just one to two days. 
But at least we can be together now. Yeah. Sila, were you all right when you were counseling the souls? Yes. The sage's power is resonating with me better now. To me, it has become as natural as breathing, and it's getting less burdensome over time. Don't worry, I won't suffer alone in silence. You should be able to tell that I've always been improving. Yeah, you've improved a lot, and even. No, it's nothing. It's all right, Sila. It's just the two of us here. You can say anything that's bothering you out loud. Sila, you. Are you hiding something from me? What exactly did you see in the illusion of the future? What kind of person was Sila? Even people who have only met her once could tell: friendly, quiet, and kind. She's friendly but not intrusive, quiet but not cold, kind but not foolish. This personality she was born with made her uniquely gentle, or rather, she is an embodiment of gentle. 10 a.m. Shikshao training room. Combat training module loaded. Would you like to commence training? Ready. Begin. In just a few moments, Sila was able to complete the S rank Valkyrie's training. Finished. Next is. It's. Sila Sampai is so strong. A young Valkyrie stood before the door of the training room. Her face painted with admiration as she looked at the battle record by the wall. When she noticed Sila walking towards her, she frantically bowed. Good morning, Sila Sampai. Good morning. You are Kimido, the support member who just joined the Andy Hankai Special Squad last month, right? Yes, I'm Tinjo Kute, melee striker of Anti Hankai Squad. Pleased to meet you,、uh, Sampai. It's okay, don't be nervous. You've improved a lot from the time back in Nagasora. Half a year ago, Sila Sampai saved me when I was in danger during an intern mission in Nagasora. We've only met once. I didn't think you'd remember me, much less know my name. Because I've watched videos of everyone's squad entry battles, all of you are such diligent, outstanding Valkyries. Do you remember every new recruit's name? You're just as strong and gentle as the rumors say. I never thought I'd be able to talk to you. I'm so touched. If there's any tasks that require you to carry items around, leave it to me. I can serve you tea too. Please don't say that. I'm a normal fighter like everyone else. If it's possible, please just call me Sila. C. C. Sila. Timido's face was flushed. She didn't know where to look, and it seemed like she'll faint any moment now. She took deep breaths continuously and finally calmed down after a few minutes.
Kira Sanpai, I still have a humble request. Actually, after you saved me, I just can't forget your gallantry in battle. Ah,、uh, it's not just me. All the squad members we know feel the same. So, if it's all right with you, can you give us some pointers, please? It's not so much as a pointer. But I've always ready to spar. All right. But but today is not a good day. I already promised a friend to. It's all right, Sila. You get to meet lots of new friends. You won't feel lonely. Sila Sampai, is something wrong? Your complexion is. No, it's nothing. Sila looked away in confusion. Under the rays of sunlight, there were only floating specks of dust. Nothing else. Only she knew that. She intended to eat two servings of parfait alone. What kind of person was Sila? Even people who have only met her once could tell. Friendly, quiet, and kind. She is lauded and well liked. She receives love and admiration from everyone around her. Just like when she was still at the orphanage, she treated this world kindly, and in return received this world's kindness. Even though it has the ability to fly through storms, a butterfly still belongs in the garden. And now, fate has only given her back her original life. At three in the afternoon, Sila knocked at the door to Sierra's home. Many years ago, when the incognito case in Nagasora was solved, she often did volunteer work here with Susanna. Miss Sila, Miss Sila is here. Good afternoon. Sila was surrounded by a group of children when she entered through the door. Hello, everyone. Miss Susanna isn't here yet. Miss Susanna was just reading us a story, but she suddenly got a phone call. After that, she yelled, "I'm sorry, I forgot that I have to submit my mission report today," and left. But Miss Susanna hasn't finished the story yet. Miss Sila, can you continue reading it to us? That does sound like something she would do. What story was she reading? Little Red Riding Hood. The sweet Little Red Riding Hood went to see her grandma in the forest with lots of delicious food. When she opened the door, she realized that grandma had grown fat. It's actually the big black wolf disguised as her grandma. So this is the story. I'm very familiar with it. But Little Red Riding Hood suddenly laughed and said, <laughs> "How interesting! Who would have thought that a prey would deliver himself to me?" She swung her scythe and chopped his big head off. Little Red Riding Hood sneered at the wolf that was still baring his fangs and claws just now. Do you know why my hood is red? The big black wolf did not reply, of course. She shook her head in disappointment, picked up her basket and scythe, and began her journey to look for even stronger prey. This is the story of how Little Red Riding Hood changed her destiny through work alone. The hunter didn't appear. Hunter? There's no hunter. But I remember that there's a hunter in Little Red Riding Hood, and something feels weird. Miss Sila, is this really the story of Little Red Riding Hood? Weird. Yeah, from a certain perspective, it is a little weird. But never mind. That was unlike any fairy tale I've heard before, as expected of Miss Sila. 
Masua, tell us another one. Sure, then I'll tell you a story that I'm the most familiar with. Long, long ago, there was a certain country with a distant and beautiful ocean. How far was that ocean? So far that only a handful of people in the entire country knew of its existence. And in the depth of that ocean lives a pure and pretty little mermaid. The little mermaid was very lonely, and her only friend was her reflection in the water. No, that's not right, Miss Sila. If Little Mermaid lives in the ocean, how can she see her own reflection in the water? That's so. Little Mermaid has no friend at all. Don't worry. Nobody will distance themselves from you because of your past, and nobody will fear you because you're weird anymore. You'll be loved by everyone and live a life illuminated by sunshine and surrounded by flowers. Who are you exactly? At the children, looking at her in astonishment, Sila stood up abruptly and looked round her, confused. Yet all that responded to her was silence. A warm breeze swept gently past her cheeks, like a subtle sigh. What kind of person was Sila? Even people who have only met her once could tell: friendly, quiet, and kind. Only the people closest to her knew that gentleness that was akin to the sea, calm and accommodating, but with an unpredictable torrent hidden beneath. Her friendliness was generosity cultivated from thousands of journeys. Her quietude was tranquility born from experiencing changes, and her kindness was instinct, unchanged even after shedding blood and tear. Destiny's chisel refined the girl's life continuously and unforgettably. Having gone through the torment of deathly dangers, she was no longer that girl who only knew to weep silently while hiding in a toy box. Sila ended her schedule for the day at night, at night, and began to return to her temporary accommodation alone. From the adjacent crossroad, a woman in a hurry appeared suddenly, and accidentally ran into her. I'm sorry, I was distracted and didn't notice you. Ah, are you Miss Sila? Is someone I rescued previously during a mission? At that time, Sila was still. Have you forgotten? There was a hijacking incident in Ark City long ago. You saved me back then. I'm not mistaken, am I? You've changed a lot since then. How do I put it? Back then, you spoke and acted more fiercely, and your personality was extremely、uh, assertive. No, you're not mistaken, but. I've always been like that. I've never changed. As for the impression you have, it must be a misunderstanding. Go back now. 